right, today I've decided, even though it's the end of my day for the most part, and I'm feeling a little tired, I'm going to work on the new ending to a song of mine called Juggernaut. Uh, this was a song that got a bit of playtime on a video I did with Troy Grady. The first one was done when he came out to see me. And we talked about, or he, he had mentioned the idea of maybe having a slightly different ending for the show and for cracking the code. So, all right. So uh, I was supposed to record something and send it to him like a month ago. But that's when, like right after I asked if he was still interested in me do, sending something over, the, right back here, this fucking shit shit pain just kicked in and from what I could tell I thought at first it was tendonitis but then I researched more because the pain wasn't going away after doing all the tendonitis stuff and every single thing that is a symptom for arthritis just checked off the list and it makes sense I mean I've been playing guitar for 20 years now and then going back to the gym uh, been in the gym for about a year and a half now before that, I took a year off of going to the gym and just did body weight training. But when I went back in and started doing heavier stuff, uh, like you, especially bench press and squat, instead of having my wrists set like this, I had it cocked back really far so the weight was like, I'm gonna get this on the camera here, it was kind of pulling down this way and pulling my wrist back further and further instead of the weight pointing straight down into my forearm. So, the weightlifting definitely exacerbated what had happened, and then, and I hate to talk bad about this, uh, but the riff bands, I've promoted them, I still think they're a great idea, but I went too far with it one day, and I had the three bands on, and actually, I'm about to, to practice kind of what I was practicing <laughs> with the riff bands on, uh, I, th I just figured it was one of those just play through the you know the stiffness and whatnot the pain play through the pain it'll go away like it always does but it didn't go away this time I overdid it um, so if you do use riff bands any kind of resistance training when you're practicing I still think it's a good idea just you got to be careful not to go overboard like I did um, so anyway I'm feeling a lot better I did a lot, did quite a few things to make my wrist feel much much better like I took some time off from the gym because I was not I was unable to train around the pain so I took a couple weeks off kept it wrapped up in this splint here I still put it on when I'm a lot during the day started taking a lot of anti-inflammatory foods and supplements to fix shit so being very careful with my wrist now so anyway enough yakking time to get to this so the, the riff basically is is this um, let's see how I do cold and out of the gate but uh, basically the, the the original riff was this if I can remember it now I think that was the original riff, and then I would try and play it double that speed on the recording. Um, this is also when I was, uh, well, trying to play way faster than I really could. So it was kind of an ego thing for the ending of that song. I was like, well, anyway, it didn't work out so well. I think on the recording it seemed alright, but when it comes down to it, I definitely wasn't able to pick everything cleanly, articulately, and things like that. So, uh, the new riff is something like this. See if I can play it well enough for you. Hang on. Oh man, I'm having a big brain fart right now. I'm cracking under the pressure. That's what it is. That 
last part where I'm just doing the speed picking there. Every time I go up in pitch, my my intention on the recording is to make each one of those a harmony. So it's just all these minor second harmonies building on top of one another to just make the most fucked up sound I can think of. So I haven't done the recording yet, so I don't know if it's actually going to stay that way. But the main thing was all the, the tripleted stuff I was doing there. That's that's the thing I'm going to be working on now. So it's the the goal is to be 280 beats a minute for, for eighth note triplets. Well, or, or 140 for the 16th note triplets and it, it lasts for a while so it really tests my endurance so this is what I'm gonna focus on now I got the metronome set at 100 I know I always talk about doing things starting at 60 but I'm doing something a little different here I, I'm gonna play something that's similar to the main riff but a much shorter thing to work on the endurance of everything and I'm gonna do this uh, I'm gonna do a lot of them so I'm going to play this riff here. I'm going to do it a hundred times at a hundred beats a minute. So why the hell am I recording this? Well, I said I was going to vlog everything I start doing now for one, but also so you can see what you may have to do in order to build up some serious endurance here, some fast speeds with lots of endurance so here we go I'm gonna count stuff as a go you kind of have to do that so you don't get lost counting a hundred in your head while playing is kind of a pain in the ass so here we go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 8, 9, 100. Exciting shit, huh? Um, so now I'm going to wait a minute or two. Um, and then I'm going to go to 110. And I'm not going to do as much. I'm just going to do 80. So I'll, I, I kind of treat this the same way I do warm-up stuff with weight training. So the first warm-up set, which is really lightweight, maybe just the bar, you do a lot of reps. Not 100 reps, I only do 15 for most things. Uh, but this, so there was like 100 repetitions at 100 beats a minute with 16th note triplets. So next I'm going to do 80 repetitions. So I decrease the repetitions while I increase the speed. So that's something you can do because I can't maintain a hundred repetitions at the speed I'm going to be going for. I'll crap out. And I don't need to do a hundred repetitions 
during the actual riff for the song, I, uh, I gotta practice and get a recording to send over to Mr. Troy Grady. See if he wants to use it or not. Anyway, well, I gotta record the song anyhow. I know I wanna use it. Alright, 110 beats a minute, 16th note triplets, 80 repetitions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fifty, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, eighty. All right. So I'm set, feeling a little bit of fatigue in here. Not much. And definitely some right here because I'm still in thumb picking territory for that speed. Um, so, one thing that Troy Grady pointed out is when I'm picking my fastest, I am an upward pick slanter. So, how the hell does it go? In order for me to remain in an upward pick slant, I always have to, if I'm going to switch strings and remain in the upward pick slant, I have to finish with the downstroke. So, he was suggesting, or he, you know, something he wanted to see or suggested I do was design some riffs for speed with this, with the pick slant. Uh, in mind. I keep looking all over the place. The camera's right there. The screen I'm looking at is right there. Anyway, so basically, uh, like he had like Paul Gilbert sixes this is an example. So, you know, you do one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you start over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and you keep doing that repeating pattern. That's something we talked about and the thing is when you do that stuff you're always hitting a downstroke when you go to change strings so you have your down up 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 and so that's kind of how most of this riff goes now because it's always going down, up, down, up, down, up, up, or down, up, 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 and, and so on. So it's always there maybe one part where it doesn't do that. But for the most part, it's, it's doing the downstroke before it goes into the next thing. So anyway. 120 beats a minute now, 60 repetitions. So again, decrease the reps as you increase the speed, much as you decrease the reps as you increase the weight during the warm-up stuff. This is just warm-up for right now. Here we go, 60. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 13, 
three, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixty. Okay. So it's just still really easy to lose count even when you count out loud. So I'm gonna do 130 beats a minute next. Uh, I'm just gonna go down to 50 repetitions. So I was going down by 20. I'm just gonna go down by 10 because I want to have 40 repetitions at the uh, 140 beats a minute, which is what the the goal is. I'm gonna pause this while I get some water. Can I pause this? Oh, I'm gonna have to splice them together. All right, time to resume the endurance practice. All right, fix the camera. There we go. Okay, 130 beats. Per 50 repetitions. And a cat in the room. That's always helpful. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, forty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifty. Okay, that was definitely uh, getting getting hard there at the end. That's what she said. So like, I really feel it here in the old muscle that moves the, the pinky um, I started losing a lot of the thumb picking stuff the further I went with that it was getting harder to maintain that speed with these muscles and so the arm wanted to start taking over a bit to uh, maintain the speed but as, uh, as many know or maybe maybe many people don't know this faster you get the less accuracy you're gonna have so that's why doing the super 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 quick picking does not lend itself very well to very uh, accurate articulate notes playing um, yeah it's like once you get closer to 200 beats a minute it's very challenging to make everything sound super clear you can on certain things but that's why a lot of riffs just aren't played super crazy fast because they're they're just not built for speed. Anyway, so 140 beats a minute here. This is the song speed, or at least this portion, the ending of the song. 16th note triplets. 40 repetitions. Here we go. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five. Why, why bother doing it more times than the song calls for? Uh, because I want to be able to do it a lot more. I want to be able to play something like that a lot more times than the song requires. So this way, when I go to record the song, 
when I go to play the song live, I want my hands and brain to be more than prepared to handle the task of playing this son of a bitch riff at the end and play it as well as possible. So, let's see. I'm going to back off a bit, back down to 100 here, try playing the entire riff. No, it is not 60 beats a minute. This riff is incredibly long and the I really don't feel like starting this damn thing over again if I make a mistake going at 60 beats a minute. So, if it sounds like I'm breaking my cardinal rule, kind of. Uh, however, in preparation for this and learning my own thing, I, I would break down parts of this riff into smaller riffs and smaller pieces and start that at 60 beats a minute and get that up past where I would like it or, it, you know, to the 140 or beyond. Even if it wasn't the cleanest thing, I would try and play it a little bit faster than the song calls for, again, to make my hands ready for this. So, I don't want to do that for this uh, practice session. This is more of a memorization thing. I just, I really need to get this damn thing under my hands again so I can send it to Troy and record the damn song. So, here we go. Let's see if I can remember my riff this time, because I sure couldn't earlier. <laughs> Now I'm gonna bump it up by five beats a minute and go again. Oh no, I'm breaking the camera. No. Oh, okay, I shouldn't have been fucking with it. Anyway, there we go. <clears throat> 105. Ten. Ugh. Oof. Four, I was cramping up on that one. I gotta stop for a second. Uh might as well just pause the uh, video from now on until I can actually think of something to say. All right, time to attempt uh, attempt 110 again. See if I can not cramp up this time. <laughs> It's one of the dangers of, of constantly bumping up the metronome speed with no breaks in between is you will get fatigued fairly fast uh, on some things, especially if it's a long riff or it's just fast speeds anyway, which is why it's beneficial to take a break in between some of your uh, practice attempts. A minute or, you know, 30, 60 seconds, maybe a minute or two. It's, it's very helpful, very helpful, because there's a lot of endurance involved with doing things like that. And neighbors outside yelling again, in the ghetto. And when you let your mind dr drift and wander off on something, it'll fuck you up. Let's try that again. Oh my god. Mistake. If I'm 
going to keep it in the video. It's important for people to see these, these things are uh, necessary in order to learn and grow. <clears throat> tell I need to single out and focus on the that riff right there so perhaps instead of continuing on right here I'll just focus on that and then uh, yeah practicing for almost 30 minutes here or maybe I haven't do it 30 fuck I don't remember when I started let me see yeah it's been about 30 minutes which is something I'm trying to be able to do is like get a practice session done in 30 minutes and, and have it that bow okay so that that's that's gonna be it then um, I think uh, what I'll do in trying to keep with the 30 minutes or under practice sessions is Tomorrow, the main focus is going to be on that riff. So, anyway, let's uh, at least attempt the full speed of the song here just so I can see because you, you gotta you gotta end on a high note here and I know I've played it before maybe not 100% perfect see shaking my my hand like that is like good to loosen up the forearm but it aggravates the fucking wrist there there's a tiny little bone that's sticking up that doesn't stick up on the right hand. It does on the left. I don't know if, if you can tell. No, you can't really tell. Looking at the camera. Anyway, whatever. It's weird. Weird. So here we go. Let's see how I do playing the end of this thing at 140, according to this metronome anyway. Not all metronomes are created equal. Did you know that? 140 on here will sound a little bit different on another metronome. It's a video I intend on doing somewhere in the future. When I get back to full production videos again. Whatever the fuck that's going to be. Anyway, here we go. I dropped my pick. Oh yeah, the uh, six millimeter gravity pick. That's what I went for. If y'all saw the first two vlogs, trying to decide which pick is my new go-to guy. The six millimeter gravity pick. This is the one. This is the one. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Video over.